So in this video, we are going to be discussing about the adjacency list representation of graph in C++. All right. So till now, what we have discussed is we have discussed about the adjacency matrix representation of graph in C++ as well as in Java. So now we'll be starting with adjacency list representation first in C++ and then I'll show it in Java as well. All right. So let's consider that we want to implement this particular graph that is shown over here in our C++ program using adjacency list. So how can we represent adjacency list in C++? So as I told you that these adjacency lists are the list of list or array of array. That is each vertex element will contain the list of all the neighbors to it. Okay. So if you just take an example of uh, the graph over here, so the vertex zero will contain a list of neighbor. The vertex one will contain a list of neighbors. Vertex two will contain a list of neighbors and so on and so forth. Okay, and that's the reason why the declaration of the graph will be something like these shown over here. So we have vector int graph of V or vector vector int graph of V. So vector of vector graph of V. So these both basically are the representation of a graph that so you can use either of these two. You can use either of these two as these both behave nearly the same. Okay, so V is the number of vertices. So here we have the number of vertices to be six. Okay, so we'll have a vector in graph of six, vector of vector in graph of six. So just give yourself some time to understand what exactly this declaration means. Okay, so here the variable name is graph. So you can use any other name as well. So it's totally up to you. But then I have used graph since we are representing a graph. Okay, so the variable graph, it is an array of size V. So what is V here? So V here means the total number of nodes in the graph, the total number of vertices in the graph. Okay. And then you have the elements of this array, the graph. So elements of this array are of type vector ends. Okay. So it's not a simple number. Rather, it is a list of numbers. So why it is a list of integer values? Since we want to store the list of neighbors associated with each vertex or node. Okay, so you can use a set as well for this particular operation. But then here I will be using vector int to represent the adjacency list. Okay, so here are some information about this particular graph over here. So we have the total number of nodes are six. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. And the total number of edges are seven. So we'll just count one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So total number of edges are seven and the type of the edges of this particular graph are undirected. So what is the difference between undirected and directed edges? So in undirected edges, the bidirectional moment is possible. That is, if you have an undirected edge between zero and one, you can move from zero to one and also move back from one to zero. Whereas in case you had a directed edge from zero to one, you could have moved from zero to one, but then backward movement would not be possible. Okay. So just understand, just remember this particular difference between a directed edge and an undirected edge. Okay. So total number of node is six over here. So we will declare the graph something like this. So we will be using the first approach among these two approaches mentioned over here. Okay. So our graph declaration would be something like this vector int of graph of six. Okay, so six here indicates the total number of nodes that are present over here. Okay, so we'll have a graph of zero, graph of one, graph of two, graph of three, graph of four, graph of five. Okay, so uh, array index starts from zero. So you'll have zero till five. So graph of and all these graph of zero, graph of one, graph of two, etc. will be list of neighbors. Initially, everything would be empty. So how do we add an edge between the two vertices? So if you just consider source and destination, so if you just consider zero to be the source and one to be the destination, and we want to add an edge between zero and one, so how do we do that? So we want to put one in the list of neighbors of zero, and we want to also put zero in the list of neighbors of one. Okay, so why do we want to put zero in the list of neighbors of one? This is to enable bidirectional movement since we have the undirected edges over here. So our C++ code will contain statements something like shown over here. So we'll have graph of source dot pushback destination and graph of destination dot pushback source. So pushback, if you are just wondering what exactly it is, so pushback is a method that adds element to the vector. So if I were to give you an example, if we consider the source to be the vertex three and the destination to be vertex five, 
what we'll do is graph of three so will graph of three will basically give you a list of neighbors of three graph of three dot push back okay so in the list of neighbors of three just push back the destination destination is five so just add five to the list of neighbors of three and then we also add graph of five dot push back source graph of five dot push back three okay so graph of five dot push back three so that we can move from five to three so we are also considering that three is the neighbor of five as well this is due to again undirected nature of the edge and the same thing you do it for all the other edges as well and you'll be getting your adjacency list formed something like this so this graph elements would be 0 1 2 3 4 5 and each of these graph of 0 so if you just consider graph of 0 the so graph of 0 is a list graph of 1 is a list graph of 2 is a list graph of 3 is a list so it is basically a, when whenever i refer to list it, it means a vector of int okay so graph of 0 is a vector int graph of 1 is a vector int graph of 2 is a vector int okay and this particular vector int list basically consists of all the neighbors of 0 this will contain all the neighbors of 1. So if you just consider 0, we have 1 and 5 in the list of neighbors of 0. So we have 1 and 5 that are directly attached to 0. Okay. And then for the list of neighbors of 1, we have 2, 5 and 0. So just observe 1 over here. So we have 2, 5 and 0. And similarly, we have it for all the other elements as well. Right. So let's get to the program running in C++. So here I have opened up my VS Code editor. In this code of adjacency list, I will be using the first approach that is an array of vectors rather than a vector of vector. So you can use either of these two and the same code will work, but then I'll be going with the most commonly used uh, uh, representation of adjacency list and that is by array of vectors. Okay. And the graph that I'm going to use to show you the representation would be this one over here. Okay, so this particular graph we will be implementing using adjacency list and this particular graph so you can see that this has six number of nodes and you have seven edges and we will be constructing the graph progressively. So one by one I will be declaring the edges between the graphs so that it's easy for you guys to follow. Coming back to the editor. So let's start by declaring a variable of a graph and this one would be an array of vector ints something like this shown here. So we have vector int graph of and how many vertices are there? So we have V number of vertices. So let us declare this V variable on the top. So we have constant int V is equal to six. Okay. Uh, since we have six number of nodes and this would basically create an adjacency list for you. Okay. So next what we need to do is, okay, let me write down the comments as well so that it's easy for you guys to follow. And I'll write it as declares a adjacency since list okay okay now what we need is we need to have a function that can add an edge to the adjacency list so here we have seven edges right and the nature of these edges is undirected okay so if you just see this diagram once again so the edges that you see over here so these are undirected edges that means if you are moving from zero to one you also can move from one to zero okay so that is basic uh, definition of undirected edge and i've reiterated it a lot of times Okay, so uh, our add edge function should basically add an edge to the neighbor list of zero. Okay, so if you want to add an edge from zero to one, so we will be adding one in the neighbor list of zero and we'll also be adding zero to the neighbor list of one. So when you see the add edge function, it will be more clear to you. Okay, so let me declare the function for adding an edge. So I'll be having something like void add edge. Okay, and the first parameter that we need is here is the graph itself because here the graph is a local variable and this function has no means of getting to know that this graph is declared over here. So we'll be passing this graph to this particular function and this function should add an edge in the graph and then it should be reflective over here. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll accept the graph in the first parameter using vector int graph of this. Okay, and then we need the information about between what two vertices are we constructing this edge so if you just take example of this so if you want to construct an edge between 0 and 1 so just assume that 0 is the source and 1 is the destination okay so in the code when you write so here i will be expecting a source parameter that is int source and the destination parameter something like this Okay, so we have uh, the graph, the source and the destination. So I just need to do what? 
I just need to do a graph of graph of source dot pushback graph of source dot pushback destination. Okay, so this particular line basically adds the destination into the neighbor list of source. So here, source is zero and the destination is one. So one would be added in the neighbor list of zero. So now one more thing that you need to understand here is that these edges that you see over here, these are undirected in nature. So for this case, we need to add another line over here that is graph of destination dot pushback source. So here we had destination to be one and the source to be zero. So zero should also be added to the neighbor list of the destination. So zero should be added to the neighbor list of one. And that is accomplished by this particular statement over here. That is the second pushback statement. Had this been a directed edge, so this particular statement would no longer be required. But then since we have the undirected edges, so we need to have this particular statement over here. All right, so this is the add edge function. So let me just, put here uh, so adds an edge adds an edge between source and destination in the graph okay and more specifically adds an undirected edge undirected edge between source and destination in the graph all right so we have the add edge function also complete so let us add some edges. Uh, so what all edges do we have over here? So we have an edge between zero and one. So let us add that here. So I will just call the add edge function, add edge, and I'll just pass in the graph, graph and between zero and one, we needed to add, have one, okay? Which is the second edge. So we have between one and two. So I will just add one and two over here. So we have one and two. Okay, and the next edge would be between uh, zero and five. So I'll just consider this edge. Uh, so I'll be having uh, zero and five. Okay, so this edge is completed. So we have an edge between one and five. Okay, so I will just copy this and I'll put five. And then we have an edge between three and five. So I'll just do an add edge graph three and five. Then we have an edge between three and four, so add edge graph three and four. Then we have an edge between two and four. Okay. So we have add edge graph two and four. Okay. So how many edges did we add? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. So we have seven edges and I think that's the number of edges we have in the graph. Okay. So this one basically adds all the edges. Add all the edges to the graph. Okay. And now let's have a method that can print the graph. So print graph of graph. Okay. So this print graph function we have not declared yet. So how would this particular print graph function look like? So we have void print graph and it should basically accept the graph itself. So we have vector int graph of this okay so since we have the number of vertices as a global variable so we do not need to pass v in the function parameter over here okay so what i'll do is i will go through each of these vertices that is for int i is equal to zero i less than v and i plus plus okay maybe uh, for better readability let me declare it as uh, um for int source is equal to zero source less than v and source plus plus okay so for each of the source vertices we need to print which are the vertices that are present in the neighbor list of that vertex okay so neighbor list of the source vertex so here what we'll do is for int uh neighbor for int neighbor for int neighbor in graph of source okay so graph of source that is graph of zero would contain one and five graph of one should contain zero five and two graph of two should contain one and four okay so all those uh, uh vertices would be populated in the neighbor variable okay so what i'll simply do is i'll just print the out uh there is an edge between between source 
and i'll do neighbor okay between the source and the neighbor so it will print a cout statement something like this and let me add a cout statement on the top as well so cout uh, graph is or uh, more specifically i'll just add ajsnc list is and uh, i will do a cout end line statement at the end and after printing each of the ajsnc list i'll leave a line as well okay so this is basically our print graph function so if you want you can also print how many neighbors does a particular source vertex has so i can do it over here itself so i'll just do something like see out a number of neighbors for source r and here it'll be graph of source dot size okay so graph of source dot size should contain the number of vertices or the number of elements that are present in the list or in the vector corresponding to that particular source vertex okay so uh, the size of so if you just take example graph of zero dot size the graph of zero dot size would contain so graph of zero would contain one and five so graph of zero dot size would be two and if you just contain uh, the number five so the so graph of five will contain one zero and three so graph of five dot size will give you the value three because there are three neighbors to five so let's compile this particular program and see what output do we get so i will just do dot slash script dot sh dot sh okay so it should basically uh, run the script uh, so if you are wondering what exactly is there in the script.sh file so it basically has a g++ command and also an, an execution of the executable that is generated by this particular command over here okay so we have got our output over here so here you can see that adjacency list is the number of neighbors for zero are two so how many neighbors does zero has so it has two neighbors that is one and five okay let me uh, keep it side by side um okay now it looks perfect okay so how many numbers so number of neighbors for zero are two and there is an edge between zero and one and zero and five so zero and one there's an edge and zero and five there is an edge all right so number of neighbors for one are three so one has three neighbors that is this this and this and so what are the edges that are going from one so we have between one and zero one and two and one and five so one zero one and two and one and five and if you just see two so we have one and four okay so between one and four that it is there and if you just see the neighbors of three so we we should be having five and four so neighbors of three is five and then four neighbors of four are three and two so neighbors of four are three and two and neighbors of five are one zero and three so we have neighbors of five as one zero and three okay so this is basically our representation of the graph of this particular graph over here using adjacency list so this was the entire program you can have a look at it